I would like to take you in a journey in which something that we all take for granted is missing. Education. My childhood was spent in Mozambique, and from a very young age, I became aware of how lucky I was to go to school. My family was closely involved in refounding Casa do Gaiato, an orphanage close to Maputo that offered a home and education to hundreds of children who had lost their parents and who lived in the streets. Just like their families, the original orphanage had been destroyed during Mozambique's civil war. But in a beautiful, dry, red earth field facing a lake, Casa do Gaiato was slowly rebuilt, and the energy, gracefulness, and vitality of the children who lived there helped to bring it back to life. I remember playing with the children of Casa do Gaiato and thinking how fragile the structure of the orphanage was. What would happen if the amazing people running it were no longer able to keep its doors open? And what if they suddenly need extra funding they were not able to get? I worried about my friends. However, the first day I entered the recently rebuilt school, the feeling of comfort and reassurance that washed me over could have not been stronger. My own school in Maputo was a stunning place by the sea and the beach, with kind, competent teachers, amazing facilities, huge trees offering vast shadows and large playgrounds, a world apart from what they had at Casa do Gaiato until then. But that day, for the first time, I felt that their opportunities and mine were being truly balanced. This is finally fair, and they will make it, I thought. And they did. Schooling was by far the most powerful tool that my friends at Casa do Gaiato were given. Years later, their education allowed them to have families of their own, their education allowed them to land secure jobs, their education allowed them to not depend on the orphanage for the rest of their lives. At Casa do Gaiato, I learned that education is a basic human right, probably the most basic of them all. The training my friends receive taught them how to secure food, water, and many of the things that probably sound a lot more basic than education. As a result of this lesson, I always gave my absolute best at school. I benefited more and more from education, I applied more and more what I had learned, and I dreamed bigger and bigger, even about coming to Cambridge, until I was stopped. The financial support to continue my studies was suddenly taken away. The only way I could afford my master's program was by taking on a full-time job. But after one year of trying to balance my education and my job, I was exhausted. I almost gave up. It was at the stage that I realized that I hadn't truly appreciated how powerless inaccessibility to education leaves you. When I began looking for new sources of funding, I was told, Education is not something that will strongly move people to help you. It's not like you don't have water to drink or uh, food to eat. But it's the other way around. It's exactly education that teaches how to secure food, water, and so many other things way beyond the point of survival. After what I had seen at Casa do Gaiato, can you imagine how I felt? I came to Cambridge arriving absolutely restless about this problem. In the beginning, I fundraised for scholarships awarded to students in African countries. But the inefficiency of trying to convince my fellow students to buy things that they didn't really want or need left me even more restless. Education was endlessly valuable for the children I was trying to help. But do you really think that candy grams and raffle tickets were equally important for the students I was trying to engage? And what could a neuroscience student with no background in development do about it? It turns out, a lot. In my case, being part of a university and being part of a very rich and diverse network of students taught me how the lessons learned from business can be translated into solving the sustainability problems I had seen at Casa do Gaiato, the orphanage, and when fundraising for these scholarships. As a result, I became motivated to establish Second Go, a social startup that helps university students to make a profit from the usually wasted second-hand items. The proceeds of Second Go fund scholarships for students usually excluded from higher education. Where else, other than at a university, 
would have this been possible so quickly and with such an amazing team? But at the same time, the question is, why is this not happening more at universities? Academics dedicate their whole lives with endless resilience and motivation to the solution of very complex problems, just as complex as poverty or inaccessibility to education. Their expertise has offered us incredibly powerful examples of social innovation. Some examples are revolutionary solar power technologies, affordable solutions to sanitation. And it's not just about capacity and motivation. Serving society has always been the mission of universities, since the very beginning of their existence. What this means in practice is that universities are uniquely well-placed to make a difference in the world. Their goodwill makes everyone, governments, NGOs, private sector, feel safe to collaborate with them. And they can use their very vast networks to connect academics to commercial enterprises. I would like to argue two things. Firstly, that because academics do their best work when they're independent, when they have intellectual freedom, and when they're detached from specific purposes and economic growth agendas, that we should not expect them to be responsible for commercializing their research for social purposes. Instead, it should be the university's responsibility to use their goodwill and vast networks to help academics find innovative applications for their research. Secondly, I would like to argue that when commercializing knowledge, universities should not forget their mission to serve society. Poverty, and accessibility to education and other international development needs must to be regarded as academic challenges. Too often, the success of an academic discovery is quantified in pounds and pence. But how many people are universities helping? What is their social impact? The problems that my friends at Casa do Gaiato had must be solved, not by feeble, isolated efforts, but by the tremendous power of intelligence, which, by definition, universities attract and should expand. Thank you.